is Charlie Flow World Sports Show. I'm joined live by Leanne Sanderson of the Orlando Pride and also England. I want to thank you for joining me, Leanne. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for having me on the show. Always a pleasure to talk to you. It's been very exciting. You know, we have soccer now in the state of Orlando. I mean, or in the state of Florida, excuse me, in Orlando. And you guys have really taken the, the, the whole women's soccer world by storm, having like a record crowd. What was that experience like just seeing that many people supporting pro soccer? Yeah, I mean, it, we knew it was going to be a really good crowd that was going to be in there. But I think there was obviously 23,000 there. But it wasn't the fact there was only 23,000. It was the fact of how like unbelievably loud they are, how fanatical they are. Because you can get a lot of people at a game, but sometimes you don't really hear anybody. But they are unbelievable. I mean, the fans is, is what's made this experience for me unbelievable so far and long may it continue because I think the fans like kind of they really are the 12th man and they give you that extra edge that no other team that I've really pl I mean Portland had fantastic fans I loved them and had a great rapport with them and I can't thank them enough for how they treated me as well but I think as well like Orlando I, I thought that it was going to be a difficult one to kind of ever top the Portland situation and I think the way the fans were in the home open night it was fantastic you know and the neat part about soccer fans in America, we've all been fans for a long time, but the great game is growing at such a tremendous rate that you have all these fans in Orlando that just didn't have a team to cheer for. Now that they've got their own identity, what has that been like in the community, meeting the fans that now have a team to cheer for? Yeah, I think what makes it amazing is the fact that there's not many sports teams in the um, city. And I think the way that Phil and Kay have organized the team and how the, their plans and the visions they've had for a long time, I mean, the team's been in existence for a really long time. Obviously, it's just only second year in the MLS, but I think the way that they are is a great kind of, the way that they run this club, it's a very family-oriented club, very community kind of driven, and, and that's something that attracted me to this team in the first place. People like Phil and being part of an organization, like the way that Phil and Kay operate, you know, because they're great people and they're the kind of people you want to play for. Yeah, you were telling me a couple weeks ago when we were talking about just how great of a job the ownerships have done there with, with coming in with a lot of experience from England and just the way you guys are treated, that it's it's one brand. It's not just a separate entity, that you guys are one huge family. No, I think it reminds me of kind of when I was at Arsenal and when we used to kind of get exactly what the men get. Um, obviously, financially not the same, but at the same time, everything else is taken care of. You know I mean? We eat with the guys. We train at the men's field. We play at the Citrus Bowl. Um, so that's that's brilliant, and I think if every team in the league could have an affiliation with the men, I think that would make our league grow even further than it already is, because I still think that there's a lot of growth to happen in the league, and I think with teams like Orlando, Portland, the likes of Houston having that partnership, and hopefully teams will come in, in the future to have the male alongside them, and they can attract the crowd, because I think some teams in the league, it's hard for them to get people at the games, because they don't have an affiliation with the men's team. Yeah, and it just probably makes it a lot less stressful for you as a player because I've heard all the stories of, you know, practices being canceled, relocated to a different field. You don't know if you're practicing on turf or grass. So as a player, well, that stress is just removed. You have a given place to practice and train. Yeah, I think as well uh, next year when the team moves to the new um, stadium with the men in the new practice facility, that it will only continue to grow, you know. But I think... There's a lot of different things in different teams, you know, in the league. And I think in this situation here, um, the only thing you need to take care of is your soccer ability. And I think that's something that attracts me to this team originally, that the professionalism that Kay and Phil have, you know, and the way that they treat us and the way that we get the nutrition is. We get everything and we get everybody to take kind of care of us, you know, and you have the experts. You have experts that are, like, at the best and they can bring you the best out of you, you know. And they've kept you pretty busy. We've already seen you do some, some broadcasting there. You, you scored an amazing goal against Seattle. What has this experience just been like being in this this new state for you, new team, and, and all that you've been involved with? Yeah, I think for me, I mean, um, when I moved to America six years ago, I think I felt like I was finally at home. You know, I feel like my individuality was embraced um, a lot. And I think that, like I said, um, I feel like, uh, it's just a place for me to thrive really and succeed and I'm happy that I kind of chose to come to Orlando and they wanted me and I think that um, like I said for me my number one objective is to, to be starting games you know and hopefully that can, can that can start happening sometime soon because I'll help the team any way that I can but at the moment I'm kind of coming off the bench and kind of playing the part that I need to play to help the team and I'm happy to do that.
I think off the field, the stuff that I'm doing off the field is definitely going well for me. You know, I'm going to meet the Prime Minister on Monday. Um, I've got an event I'm hosting tomorrow night. So everything's kind of really taken care of. And I feel like the fans love me here. So that's always nice to play in front of people that, you know, appreciate you, you know. Well, you do have a very identifiable haircut and you're probably one of the most fashionable players in the league. And you've also got some other key fashion players like Ashley Harris. saw you guys did a shoot. What's that like being with these teammates? How have they embraced you? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I've played on, I've been fortunate enough to play on some teams over the years, some great players um, in Portland last year, the same thing. And I think um, it's great to be part of an organization where everybody's kind of professional, you know. And for me, I just love kind of fashion and I love different things. And obviously, Ashton's into similar stuff like that. So I think we can connect on that level. But I think, like I said, it's just great to be part of. There are people on the team that have done things that kind of and, and played a lot of minutes and been kind of unsung heroes, you know, as well. So I think it's great we have a core group of players, but I think in this league it takes a whole 23, a whole group of 18 to 20 players that can kind of for a team to be successful, you know? Yeah, definitely. And other things off the field, I, I saw an interesting post that you got invited to hang out with your prime minister, David Cameron. I mean, that, that must have been a dream come true to get something like that. Yeah, when I got the email, actually, I thought it was I thought it was spam. I like didn't believe it was real. <laughs> um, part of me felt like it was a joke. And I actually, my um, agent Damon uh, emailed me the email, and I was like, he was like, this is pretty cool. And I was like, is this real? And he was like, I think so. Let's check it out. So then we both were like, couldn't believe it, you know, because it was just unbelievable. And uh, then I I actually called Downing Street, um, the number that they gave me on the invitation, and I said. Um, sorry, I don't mean to bother you, but I was just wondering if um, this was real. And the lady said, what's your name? And I gave my name, she's like, yes, ma'am, it's real. And she started laughing. So I think, like I said, like for me, and it was a great moment to share with my family because um, that's the reason why I play. You know, my mum and dad have been a massive part of my career and of my life. And, and it's just kind of a reward for them, you know, because again, honour to meet the Prime Minister, as well as kind of meeting people like the royal family. It's things that never really happen, you know. So I think I'm just very proud of this moment, and I'm going to go home to England on Sunday and enjoy it with my family. Yeah, I think that that's a, it's a big thing on the map now with with the success that England had in the World Cup with you guys coming up with a third place that and beating Germany and, and just an amazing game that really starting to put women's soccer on the map just in, in your home country of England that you guys are getting that attention. The FA is giving you the, the training facilities and the supplies you guys need to be successful. Yeah, I think so. I mean, for me, I, I feel like the best place for me is in America, but I'm happy that the girls are finally getting the recognition that they deserve, you know, and I hope long may it can continue. They've got the FA Cup final tomorrow, which Arsenal and Chelsea will take part in at Wembley, and they're hoping to get around 35,000 people there. So I think they've sold around that many tickets. I'm not really sure 100%, but I know that playing in the FA Cup final is kind of our equivalent of the Super Bowl, you know. So I think it can still grow. The crowds could still grow. I think it's each step at a time, you know, but I think it's it's great that they're getting better crowds than they had before for their league games and stuff like that. Well, again, Leanne Sanderson, Orlando Pride. Leanne, always a pleasure to speak with you. And thank you for taking the time out thank of your you. day and, and safe travels over to London. And definitely enjoy watching you play and wish you the best of success the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. Have a good day. All right, you too.